first item is approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Are there any uh, additions or corrections to the agenda that somebody would like to make? And we do not have an executive session, Kathleen? Correct. Okay, so all in favor of approving the agenda as drafted, signify by saying by thumbs up. Okay. Uh, and uh, we'll recognize that Lindsay uh, has excused herself for sickness, so uh, that'd be unanimous. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes. We'll start first with our March 17th special select board meeting, our retreat. So moved. moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Did you get that, Kathleen? Any uh, requested changes to the draft minutes? Hearing none, then uh, all in favor? Okay. The next is our March 24th regular select board meeting minutes. So moved. Moved. Mr. Got it. I second. You do a second. Okay. So we have them moved and seconded. Are there any requested changes to the draft minutes for our March 24th meeting? Hearing none, all in favor? Okay. I find we talk over each other if we, we're voting. It. It's not easy for me to hear it. Uh, is there any citizen that wanted to make a comment, Kathleen? We have uh, Mary Gill on the line, I think, or M. Gill. Uh, if she would like to, or she would like to uh, unmute their microphone if they have anything to say. If not, uh, I think that's it. We have David Wetmore, our zoning administrator, uh, on the call, and Chris English, assistant town manager, on the call as well. Okay, I'm not seeing anybody raising their hand. Okay. The next is. Uh an update on our downtown bridge replacement project and uh, this is to just uh, reiterate for those of you on the board but also to let those that are watching out there know uh, the select board uh, endorsed a letter requesting that the governor consider our downtown uh, bridge and rail project be critical infrastructure project and to restart the project um, as a part of that was a consideration of what actions could be taken to make it uh, to enforce social distancing, uh, hygiene, and, and anything else that would help prevent uh, potential spread amongst the work crew and out through to the town. And some of that included activities such as bringing meals to the work crew at the place. <clears throat> um, the Kabricki worked with their subs, made sure everybody was able to, to uh, meet those requirements, and then they signed a letter committing to uh, fulfilling the, those obligations, as well as an obligation that the governor uh, has, has stipulated, which is that if you're coming to work in Vermont or to be in Vermont from outside the state, that you stay in Vermont. And so they also committed to um, having the, those that are New York based staying in Vermont. Uh, Vermont Rail did the same with their side of the, of the uh, work and also endorsed a letter as well as did Neighbors Together on the behalf of the community. The entire packet went forward up through the project management team to the secretary of uh, transportation, and he has uh, met with the, with uh, Governor Scott. Uh, that went to him Friday morning. As we all know, Friday, uh, very soon afterwards, he had a press conference when 
wherein he uh, he pushed the the uh, stay home, stay safe policy out through to May fifteenth. Uh, when he did that, though, he did say that he will be watching the trends and that as opposed to everything starting back up on April 15th, he was pushing it out so to ensure that uh, he could open the spigot gradually. Um, I'm in high hopes, as, as I'm sure there are many people around the town are in high hopes, that as that spigot begins to open, our project will be one of the first ones that gets restarted. There are only a couple of projects throughout the entire state that have, have been green lighted and those are emergency road repair projects. Um, other than that, uh, the, as far as projects like ours, there's nothing ongoing right now. Ours is on the top of the list to be restarted. And that's all we know at this point. We do talk to them daily. Uh, Jim Gish, our liaison with the state, talks to them multiple times a day. Um, I talked to Secretary Flynn uh, today as well. I'm get, I was getting some pressure from uh, a number of, of uh, senior people around town uh, to ask if they could lobby the governor on our behalf. Um, and I just wanted to verify with Secretary Flynn that, uh, that it was in front of the governor and uh, that we had the consideration and he assured us that all it does is plug up the airwaves to do more lobbying because our, our case has been made. And so um, I, let, I let that know. So that's where we are right now. And uh, now we're, we, rec we recognize that uh, by pushing off the amount of work that we've pushed off, we've lost a number of days and there's no way that our closure will start as anticipated, but uh, we're hoping that we can make up some ground once we get the green light. And so given anybody an actual closure date at this point is premature, uh, given that, that we're um, right now in a, in a in a stand. So are there any questions on that? Anything, Jim, I'm missing? Jim, I don't think you have a mic. I'm not good at reading lips either. <laughs> you could type in a message if you'd like. Any questions from Carlson. the board? No. Okay. All right, so uh, then we'll move on. The next is a request for a letter of support from Caleb Rick, the CEO of Eco Global, and I'm gonna let Kathleen uh, present that. So Eco Global, CEO Caleb Brick is asking the board to consider providing a letter of support for a proposed Addison County Economic Development Corporation application for a U.S. Department of Agriculture, USDA, Rural to Business Development Grant for $30,000 for a feasibility study uh, for uh, locating a manufacturing plant uh, and headquarters here in Middlebury. Uh, Eco Global is a Vermont based firm that uh, will manufacture uh, a variety of products from recycled plastic waste, including LDPE single use plastic bags. A letter of uh, support for the grant application is in your packet if the board would like to consider uh, endorsing that request for a feasibility study. Any comments or questions from the board? I just wondered how we were going to sign it. I, I would propose that either uh, that you give me permission to sign on behalf of the board. That sounds the best way. 
for something like this, can you do a DocuSign, uh, Kathleen, or no? I am not set up for Docu time, uh, DocuSign at this point. Um, okay. But I could. Um, in the future, for this particular one, Caleb needs this first thing in the morning. Okay. Okay, Nick has his hand raised. Nick? Oh, he's just fixing his thing. He's playing with his technology. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Are we there now? Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Well, certainly I move to approve a letter of support uh, for ACEDC's application for U.S. Department of Agricultural Rural Business Development grant on behalf of Eco Global. And um, should I make it as a second, included in the motion and authorize um, Kathleen Ramsey to sign it on behalf of the board? Yes. Thank you. Yes, we hope so for that. Second. Okay. Any other questions or comments from the board? Yes. I do. Where's yes. my hand? I did. I'm trying to find my hand. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I see your hand moving all around the screen. <laughs> Does this is work. <laughs> Stay back there, Nick. Stay back. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Don't come too close. <laughs> just okay. Him. okay, so yeah. actually, what I just want to make mention this, this is, to me is really exciting to see this move on. I mean, it just kind of shows how long it takes to do economic development and to really do it well because this first came along early when Jamie Gaucher was here. This was one of his first things he was uh, in communication with Caleb. And so that's got to be what, eight years ago now? So it just shows that economic development is not an easy task, but if we're focused on what our economic development plan is, and we still obviously have room to go to develop that properly, and we uh, you know, stay, stay with our eye on the end goal, it can lead to good things. So I certainly appreciate Caleb for moving this on forward, and this will happen. I'm very confident in that, and it will be a really great thing to add to our uh, our industrial base in our community. Okay, thank you, Nick. Victor? Well, I, I, I think it's a perfect industry to bring here, and I hope it will encourage others like it. I mean, it's it, it's part of the solving the the, the, the problem of, uh, of uh, climate change and uh, too many plastics and so on and so forth. So I think this is a, this is a perfect industry, and I'm very happy to support it. Okay. And I think most everyone has had an opportunity in the past, at least a number of you have to, to get to know Caleb and, and what his plan is and how that uh, is designed to, to uh, fit in Middlebury. I think there's certainly a, uh, a lot of work to be done. And this is certainly a step to see if there is a potential reality to, to this project uh, here in, in our local community because there's a number of, of requirements to uh, like the rail extension that to make it work in the location he's considering. So um, I, I think this is a good, good next step. All in favor of supporting the letter of, of support? Okay. So Kathleen, you'll sign for all of us. I do have DocuSign. If other people have DocuSign, I could create, could turn the document into a DocuSign, Kathleen. But uh, I think just having you sign is probably the easiest way. Uh, for tonight. At least for this one, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, next, uh, we're gonna ask Chief Hanley to bring us up to date on the COVID-19 situation. Chief? Hello, everybody. You can hear me? Yes. Hey, Tom. All right. I'll try to make this quick for you. Uh, right now, we're not seeing any gaps in critical town services due to the absenteeism from COVID-19. So all are healthy and all are working, apparently. Uh, we've had no gaps in services for that. Um, just some of the general stuff. Uh, PMC announced that the uh, suspension of non-urgent elective surgeries is on through May 15th. So if you've got some minor surgery, they're going to postpone that. 
Uh, right now, there's other stuff going on as far as emergency management that may or may not relate to this. We're conducting the typical monitoring of streams that we do at this time of the year, monitoring stream gauges, with snow melt and things. We're always worried about flooding at this time of year. So we're keeping a track on that. And right now, there is no flood threat at this time. We've seen some dangerous activity with the railroad tracks in New Haven, right over our town line, where somebody's been putting some devices on the tracks. Uh, obviously, with the big rail derailment we had a few years ago, or eight years ago, whenever it was, um, we're concerned about that. So it's another thing we're keeping an eye on. Um, we're seeing the risk of hazmat ac accidents are lowered because there just isn't a lot going through town at this point. Uh, we're coordinating with the hospital and college weekly. We have a weekly conference call um, with the three MDs, myself, Mike Leighton at the hospital and Rick Christofferson at the college, just a weekly update to see if we need anything and see how things are going. We have a weekly conference call with the commissioner of public safety and we have our Friday conference call with Vermont Emergency Management and the Vermont Department of Health for status updates and guidance on certain things. We also have, as you know, the weekly conference call with the hospital, college, and town principals. Um, we're coordinating all our media releases between the hospital, town, and the college. So Ron Holman, Sarah Ray, and myself will exchange all these media releases that we do, the daily bulletin that you see before they go out. And occasionally they'll ask me to add something to it that might be pertinent. And most recently, over the weekend, we facilitated the release of 30 shelter cots from the American Red Cross shelter trailer, which we store here on site. It's a rather protracted um, process we had to go through. Uh, it took about a week or two to get that done, but the hospital had asked us if they could get through 30 of these cots. We facilitated that, and they were transferred on Saturday. Um, when this crisis is over, the American Red Cross, Red Cross will be giving the cots to us, so we'll have our own 30 shelter cots or so. Um, on site here. Uh, back uh, a week or so ago, we were concerned about an one of the items in Addendum 8, which appeared to require towns to provide non-congregate lodging for first responders who are on exposure for quarantine or recovering from CB-19, uh, which meant we would have had to have lodging in place in case one of our officers was sick. Uh, it turns out that that is not the case. That was, was not the intent that was just an enabling order. In other words, if we did do something like that, we would qualify for reimbursement from FEMA. So they corrected that language there and that put us all a little bit more at ease. We're starting to see some panic buying easing a bit, you know, the kind of rush to the stores to take all the critical items off the shelves. Part of this is the uh, everybody staying at home and minimizing trips to the store. There's fewer trips to the store. So instead of buying one of something, they buy a bunch of somethings. And when faced with the prospect of empty shelves, they then start grabbing everything they can and it gets into this perpetual loop that we can't seem to get out of, where I'm buying a lot because it might not be here when I come next time. Uh, as the supply chain keeps up, and there is no problem with manufacture, there's plenty of this stuff, it's just getting it here to make sure the shelves are full. Um, we should start seeing that kind of minimize a little bit. And that's the, the usual stuff, the hand sanitizer, the disinfectant wipes, Toilet tissue and paper towels are the big ones. We're seeing some of the other suppliers catching up now, eggs and dairy products and some of the other things, meats. Um, past few days, this is starting to wear on people. We're seeing this both from my observation and the officer's observation. We're contacting more and more people that we're seeing congregating in groups, mostly young people. people. They're out of school, they're hanging around, the weather's a little bit nicer. And uh, we had Kathleen had let us know there was some behind the town offices today. But this is getting more and more. We're trying to break these things up and getting them used to staying their social distance. We're also seeing more and more people out and about without their masks. I was in a ran into a hardware store today to pick up some needed things we needed here and uh, saw that none of the employees were masked. So we're seeing some more of that. People are getting used to it. And the kind of fear, that kind of shock thing that we saw the first month is kind of going away and people are getting used to this. So our concern is that there might be another spike that it, the kind of complacency on this could lead to another spike in this. Uh, some of the other issues we're dealing with is some of the spring cleaning at this time of the year uh, with people doing home composting. It really is important to get some of these yards cleaned up. And I know some of that is against the governor's order and they specifically didn't want people doing spring cleaning. But from our perspective, just from health, uh, we don't need to have the proliferation of ticks and rodents out in people's yards or out in areas where people are composting. So we're hoping that is taken care of. We're starting to see an uptick in incidents that we predicted would happen 
people being home and out of work and a lot of time on their hands, a lot of family disturbances. Some shoplifting calls are up. Surprisingly, not really for food. Shoplifting, um, eye makeup and things like that. So I don't know where that's going. Sure. We're seeing uh, a little bit of antagonism between people. And these are things that we expected and we anticipate will continue to uptick over the next couple of weeks until we can get um, this over with. In the meantime, here at the PD, uh, we're really focused on maintaining a healthy force. I really don't want to lose anybody. If we do, that could be catastrophic, losing a number of people, obviously, especially with some of the activity picking up. Uh, we go into 12-hour shift schedules this weekend. Uh, they work longer days with fewer days a week. It gives them more off time for rest time. It also provides more people at any one time working than we typically have. So it also gives us a buffer if we start losing people as far as uh, maintaining a, the staff. Uh, we were able to find some dust masks, not the typical things that are breathing protection, but we're using them to cover our N95 half respirators so that we don't wear them out as fast. We only have a limited supply here. We're not as in critical condition as other agencies might be because we have planned um, for these things to happen. So we had a pretty good supply here. Some of the things we've changed in the building there, you've seen on the notes, some of the things we're doing here that'll go back to normal once everything is back to normal. Um, basically just trying to protect employees here and making sure we have a healthy staff and we're out there on the street. We are engaging people that we need to engage. We're not backing off of anything, uh, serving orders, doing all the normal things that we have to do, but we're focused right now on basically security and protecting property and people that are out there. And that's a lot, so um, not much else going on. Thanks, Chief. Chief, could you use the uh, the cloth masks to go over your N95s? I've got extras if you could use a few. Yeah, we could always use them. We get people in here that we'd rather put masks on. Um, we got one of the guy's wives here is making cloth masks for some of the officers here, but we get people here at the police station that don't have any protection. Um, we only use one room here for bringing in people from the, actually two rooms for people bringing in from the outside. We have one room that's, we had set up in the purposeful design of this building was a, uh, a negative atmosphere room, negative pressure room, knowing that these are the kind of things that we anticipate dealing with. So those are the rooms that people go in, but if, if we can protect them while they're in the building, that would also serve to protect us. So if we had a supply of those here, I think that would be helpful. Okay, if somebody wants to swing by tomorrow, I've got I've got some I can give you, Chief. Will do. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, Chief, I, I just got a quick question. How is uh, how are the homeless population doing? They're all put up at the Marriott, the Middlebury Inn, Sweets Motel, and Sugar House right now. Um, we had to work with the shelter to make sure that they had supervision there 24 hours a day rather than relying on the hotel staff because often they only have one person working. There have been some behavior issues, some conduct issues there, two of the people we had to remove for a variety of different issues. But uh, the shelter folks are there and they're doing a pretty good job managing them. Uh, they're coming from all over too. It's not just our local shelter. Agency Human Services is bringing people in from wherever they need to bring them in from the other side of the state, wherever they come from. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Um, also, welcome. during this, so we, we, is this one we want to talk about uh, some input to uh, Representative Welch's request, Kathleen? Yes, we had uh, three of you who came forward with some ideas to respond to Congressman Welch's request for input on uh, future stimulus packages and uh, Nick, uh, Farhad, and Victor uh, submitted some comments. So if they would like to uh, expand on those, um, I'll pass it to them. My comment uh, is that it, it's a little bit too late what was happening. The stimulus pack, package passed back in March, March 17th. Um, and. Uh, we just started seeing the money. I think some of the people uh, uh, we applied. The banks are overwhelmed, in my opinion. Uh, I have called six times to Vermont Federal Credit Union, and they have yet to call me back because they are so overwhelmed with the 
with the traffic they are receiving, uh, the requests and stuff for the payroll protection program and the small business assistance. So I know all these things are good. Um, the stimulus package is good, but it's not here on time. And I'm worried that people are going to run out of the money, run out of resources, and think of help until they get the money. Uh, just a, a, a comment on uh, Farhad. Uh, you know, I work with the National Bank of Middlebury, and I think they've processed over 300 PPP loans, and they've been outstanding. I was able I was able to get mine approved on the first the first day. They they they've just been doing a great job. Um, and you know, the stimulus money um, is is one thing. Um, Fortunately, with unemployment, um, my staff is uh, are doing fine with money because of unemployment. So that's that's a positive side. And there's going to be more economic budgets or, or more, more economic uh, legislation that the, that they're going to be working on. They have to they have to correct things like the PPP. And I don't know if that's appropriate in, in this letter to um, uh, Representative Welch. Um, I've already given him an earful with several emails and so have a bunch of other people, so. Uh, Nick, Nick has his hand up. I'll put it down as soon as I, I want to do this part first. That clicks on mute, then we'll worry about the down later. My thought toward this is that, okay, you know, the first part of stimulus, I understand it um, as much as anybody, I suppose, can, at least the intent of it. But now we've got to think if the next stage is, okay, we're going to come out of this thing and what do we do? And, and my view is we have to not, we have to quit thinking small. We have to think big. And, um, you know, in, in one of the cases is how do we get people working and how do we take this opportunity to train for something better? Uh, you know, for, for years there's been discussion and, and certainly as I travel around, I see we, we have horrible infrastructure throughout the country. And this becomes an opportunity to train, you know, set up training programs to get the skill sets, get, get people trained on, on to the aspect of rebuilding our country. It's a chance to actually rebuild our country in a way to make us look like a first world nation. Um, and it also, and if you just look at some of the countries that have put these stimulus programs in, and the Canadians are an example, is they find out that they actually get several dollars in return every dollar that they put into uh, these stimulus packages, these infrastructure programs, because you have people who are working and they're, they're paying property taxes and they're buying products and you know, they're, they're doing the things that suddenly generate revenue so that the government can actually start to get a return on this investment and we all get a huge benefit. So um, my those were just my initial quick thoughts I threw off and I, I could go into a lot more, but I'm not going to bother doing that now, but it's just, it's time to think big. And um, that was kind of my my hope is that that's what the third third stimulus would be, is, is something looking beyond this you know, storm that we're in right now. Kathleen, I, I, I would just uh, reiterate that I think that there's a, a better payback on the infrastructure expense. If they're putting the money towards that, you look at what they did in 07, 08, following and the money that was put into infrastructure, uh, it, it kind of jump-started us out of that recession and, and led to one of the longest prolonged periods of growth. Mm -hmm. And I think we all, that all taxpayers benefited by the increase in the quality of the infrastructure. We know we still have a lot of aged infrastructure and that's probably a good place to start. And so I, I think that uh, the argument could be made that, that that's one of the first places they should try to continue to spend money. Victor. Well, I think that's right. I mean, I, it seems to me public works is exactly what um, you know, got us out of the Great Depression. And um, um, I mean, I can say I experienced that directly. and. Um, it seems to me that's what we need now are major, major public works uh, programs. Unfortunately, that has to come from, I think, the federal government. And uh, uh, 
what worries me is the fact that uh, many towns, Kathleen circulated um, uh, this document. Uh, what was the town from Kathleen? I can't uh, remember. The town of Colchester about the uh, tax. Yeah, yeah. No. That uh, that the uh, I mean the the revenues are going to be way down um, for us all. Mm -hmm. I mean locally, uh, statewide, and so there's going to have to be really a great infusion of um, of public money. I mean, it, and that's that's really the source where it comes from, and I think we have to start lobbying our congressional de delegation. Um, I, I think they're sympathetic to this, uh, to move in that direction. Heather Seely has her hands up. It's sorry. Um... I didn't really know what to say because I, you know, when we, Kathleen asked us for responses to a letter, um, but when I read the email from, well, I can't remember the first name, Moulton, about yeah. uh, broadband on uh, Holiday Road, um, I thought, you know, being a little more specific about um, expanding access for, you know, rural areas for broadband and et cetera. You know, might be a good thing to add to the list. Um, so I don't know, if, if, Kathleen, if you could just help me out, and if if I should put something together to give to you, or if you had already thought to include that in the letter. Yes. Uh, after I heard from Kim, I thought that that was something that the board could talk about tonight. And if you'd like me to include that uh, to any correspondence to Congressman Welch. And I've heard that uh, both on the virtual town hall. Uh, from the senator, from the congressional delegation, and uh, several people locally have contacted me to just say they need better uh, broadband. Okay, thank you. The other thing you might add, Kathleen, is how we had put together a plan uh, to take care of some, some uh, serious needs of an infrastructure and it was dependent upon projected tax financing and and with the with the decrease in the economic level that will be challenged as well and on, on, the, good, on the good side brian um a lot of these projects um, the infrastructure projects are poised shovel ready we have plans ready to go, um, so we're in a good position to take advantage of any uh, funding opportunity. Yeah, I remember that's how we got so many uh, new guard facilities here in Vermont because we were ready when other states weren't. And uh, when that money comes, they're going to want projects that are ready to go to bid. All right. Okay. Anything else that uh, you'd like to see, Kathleen? Um, in the letter. Uh, Victor alluded to, uh, no, I think that's good for the letter to the congressional delegation. Um, but uh, we also, I also wanted to talk about the correspondence to the legislators about uh, tax collections. Mm -hmm. We received uh, this afternoon uh, some forwarded correspondence from VLCT. Um, All right leading a left, an effort to have the state uh, take responsibility for any delinquent uh, state education property taxes that we do not collect. Um, and so I would like to have the board's endorsement to reach out to our legislative delegation and have board members do the same uh, to support that effort. Mm -hmm. I, I think that uh, we're all we would all be in support of that, Kathleen. I'm looking at all the heads nodding, and yeah, yes. uh, it, it makes a lot of sense. I think VLCT is asking for it's a very reasonable ask, and uh, let us know what we need to do. Uh, it, you know, we're certainly happy to send a note to our local legislators. But is VLCT looking for all the towns to sign on to that letter? Do, do you need a 
I think they were asking for us to reach out uh, as quickly as possible. At the local yeah. level? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, they were asking what they could do for us. That's a that's a that's something that uh, would be very meaningful, and it, it uh, is just asking them to float the money. It's not asking them to pay it for us. Uh, given given uh, the situation, it's basically asking them to do exactly what the IRS is doing with our taxes and everything else. So it seems like a reasonable ask. <laughs> so uh, I would encourage everybody, everybody should have the emails to our local legislators and maybe Kathleen uh, just verify for you if you, if you don't have it. Why, 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 did, why don't I send um, some text of a, a suggested email to them as well as their email addresses to make it easier for everyone? That would be perfect. Sounds good. Thank you, Kathleen. Kathleen, anything else in uh, number seven here? That is it. Thank you. Okay. I will call attention to, that uh, Kathleen and Jim have started a frequently asked questions. It seems to always be the same questions, so <laughs> it's it's not a it's not a tremendously long fact, but it but it uh, it is there and it's on our on our website. Uh, next is a year to date budget uh, report, Kathleen. So you have in your packet the year-to-date budget reports for the general fund, water fund, sewer fund, and equipment fund. Um, all of the expenditures are on tracks uh, throughout uh, all of the departments and funds. Uh, unfortunately, um, I think that we're going to be taking a hit to our revenue, uh, as is everyone, uh, particularly I'm estimating that will be uh, 150 to 200 thousand dollars low on our receipts, and that's out of an 11.2 million dollar budget. So certainly not devastating. Just something to be aware of, and to curtail uh, expenditures in the general fund where where possible. I'm just going to uh, admit uh, Ross Conrad, who just joined the meeting. Um, so library revenues will be off about 10% or about $5,000. Um, recreation revenues may be off 25 to 40% uh, since we rely on spring and summer recreation revenue to make the targets in this fiscal year. So that could range between 62500 uh, and $100,000. Unpaid uh, Delinquent taxes from the March 16th final installment uh, will be higher at year end than usual. At this time last year, we had just under $175,000 uh, outstanding in delinquent taxes for FY19. This year, the amount is $342,000, an increase of $167,900. Uh, at eighty-two dollars, uh, and while expenditures to date are on target as of March thirty-first, we do not know what our unanticipated COVID nineteen uh, response expenses might be over the course of the next two and a half months. Department heads are reviewing the March thirty-first budget report, which they received late last week, and will provide year-end projections in the coming weeks. Thank you, Kathleen. Any questions of Kathleen on the on the budget? Not seeing any. Uh, we'll move on to the check warrants for HUD. Um, I move to approve total expenditure in the amount of seven million five hundred three thousand six hundred twenty nine dollars and sixty nine cents. Consisting of seven million three hundred four thousand six hundred eighty-two dollars and ninety-seven cents for accounts payable, and one hundred ninety-eight thousand nine hundred forty-six dollars and seventy-two cents for the payroll for the period of March 27, 2020 through April 14, 
Do I hear a second? Second. <laughs> Thank you. All in favor? Okay. All right. Um, town manager's report. Kathleen. In a March 30th letter, Alex Schubert of the Insurance Services Office, ISO, confirmed that the town has retained its public protection classification rating of 05 over 5X, signifying that the town's structural fire suppression delivery systems meets ISO standards. ISO's 2019 public protection classification survey had raised questions about the sufficiency of components of Middlebury's fire suppression system, which could have adversely affected the town's insurance rating. Steve Shaw credits DPW Operations Director Bill Kernan and members of the Water Department for their critical role in retaining the town's PPC rating. And that's all I have. Yeah, we don't need insurance to go up at the same time, right? So th that is uh, a bit of good news that we should recognize at this yeah. time. Yeah, thank them for their work. Okay, uh, this is not the fastest meeting we've ever had, but it's getting close to it. Uh, we're going to move into board member concerns then. I'll, uh, Victor. I mean, many concerns, but we won't. <laughs> Nick. No, I have nothing to add tonight, Brian, other than, you know, thanks for the continued great work among all of our staff and employees. It's, uh, you're making a difference. Heather. I don't have anything to add tonight. Thanks, Brian. Dan? Yeah, I just have a, a question for uh, Kathleen. Um, have you had very much response to your uh, furlough offer? And how's that gonna, how is that gonna impact the way you're doing your business? We have uh, tried to, I don't think it will have any impact the people uh, that are most interested uh, have been people that find it difficult to work remotely um, and um, have concerns like children out of school. And um, or health concerns. So I don't see that it's going to impact the rest of us are going to have to step up and get it done. OK. Um, I just, I just have, uh, uh, Farhad, did you have something to add to that? Because I have another question. No, go ahead. Then I'll ask. Um, I, I guess my more of a statement than anything, you know, I've been spending my, um, a great deal of my time trying to um, uh, just keep my business so um, that we have the opportunity to, re to reopen. But, um, you know, sometimes with the town business being the new guy, um, I feel kind of like I'm not doing anything. Uh, I know, I know, uh, Brian and Heather, you're busy and everything, but I'm, am I the only one sitting here that just basically only attends the meetings and every once in a while asks Kathleen a question or is there, is there something yes. more that I should be doing? <laughs> I don't know how to do anything except lead and be involved. So, and, and, I, and I'm struggling with, with that right now. Right now, uh, being your first year, we haven't gotten you on to any to the, the committee work yet. When you start getting into the committee work, Dan, that's where you know the board as a whole. We meet in this as a select board a couple times a month. The the real work is done out in the committees, and uh, getting you onto those committees is where you'll you'll start putting in a lot more extra time because you got to do the backgrounding and and you know bring bring a, a uh, 
recommendation to the board out of the committee and the board then has an opportunity to, to have dialogue and question it and make sure that it's that it's reasonable but we we rely very heavily on the committee work uh, through the board and yeah I, I, I do I do I do understand that I guess it, it's um, it's it's it, we're, we're just in such a strange place right now. It's just, it's hard to simulate that, that um, anything else that I should be doing, but thank you. Yeah, well, we appreciate your concern and, and we'll make sure you, we'll make sure you've earned your stripes here shortly. <laughs> once we get back to work. I have to be careful, huh? <laughs> Ron? Yeah, I had a question for Kathy and all, so. Uh, besides the library, are there any other layoffs for the town? Right now, we're taking volunteers. Okay. And the other question, uh, it could be a stupid question also, but uh, does the stimulus have any room to help the town when you lay off these employees, the payroll protection and all those? Does the town qualify for something like that? The payroll protection? I yeah. don't think we, uh, we qualify for the payroll protection, but I could look into it. Or, or anything that town is suffering, right? Uh, you, you're going to be behind on our budget. So is there anything in the stimulus for small towns or no? There hasn't been anything uh, specifically. We are qualified for um, FEMA funding for unanticipated expenses associated with um, okay. the pandemic. All right. Okay. Um, uh, Ryan, we have uh, Ross Conrad attempting to join us. I tried to, yeah, here he is. Um, he has some comments to share about 5G. He tried to get in earlier when we were talking about the letter to the congressional delegation. So I will um, see if, Ross, can you hear us? Ross, put, uh, give us a thumbs up if you hear us. Can you see us, Ross? Maybe you can write him a message or something. Uh, we, we are going back and forth on the email here. Hold on. Okay, so I think you're on, Ross. We can see you. Your microphone is off, so go ahead. Oh, um... I don't know where you are in the meeting, and we were just doing uh, select board member concerns. But you you noted uh, that you had something to say about five G. Right. Thank you. I appreciate the moment and the time. Um, so we definitely need uh, more uh, better internet in downtown. Um, however. Um, I would like to encourage the select board to uh, be cautious and make sure there are certain concerns about 5G that are answered before we go with that route, because there's other routes such as fiber optics, which are actually better than 5G. Um, with 5G, I think any system, we need to know what's going to happen with the data that's collected on everybody. That's really important. I also think... Um, there's actually some questions about uh, the effects of the 5G radiation. Um, some studies have been done, but not much. There's really not a lot of data. We don't, quite frankly, there's, we don't really know whether it's safe or not. Um, if you look at the research, I've, I've tried to dig out stuff, and there's a little bit of stuff that was actually done by industry, and um, unfortunately, uh, one study that was done and it showed possible reason to be concerned and that uh, researcher was attacked by the industry, their reputation was ruined and 
since then, no one else has really done any research. <laughs> Interesting enough. Um, so there's, there's di- plus there's, you know, extreme cost. Um, but I'm hoping that the select board will be cautious and not just jump in head first without really looking into it, making sure uh, the, the community's uh, best interests are li- looked out for. It's not just about getting great internet service. Thank you. Thank you, Ross. Okay, thanks for joining us, Ross. You're our first uh, outside participant, uh, community participant. Our system works. Glad to hear. Okay, uh, so if there's, are there any hang fires? Has anybody got anything that didn't get covered in our meeting? Uh, not seeing any, then uh, I, I uh, will, uh, our next meeting is in, should be in two weeks, I guess. I don't have my, too many things on screens. I, I can't control three different screens at once, Kathleen. April 28th. April 28th. Okay. So uh, have it, stay safe, have a good evening, and uh, let's uh, everybody just think positive thoughts about getting our bridge project up and going again. You got it. Be well, everybody. Good night. Good night, everybody. Thanks. Good night. We have to have a motion to adjourn. Oh, yes. That's right. Okay. Otherwise, we'll so be here all night. <laughs> okay. So- all in favor? Okay. Have a good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night.